Welcome to this weekly word. I'm Pastor Jenny, and I'm glad you are a part of our online community. I'm excited to read for you this scripture, which embodies for me what it is to be a follower of Jesus. In this scene from the second chapter of the Gospel of Mark, there are many gathered around Jesus, listening to his teaching, hoping to receive a blessing. And there is one who is paralyzed for reasons unknown to us. As you listen, consider where you would find yourself in this story. Are you a part of the eager crowd? Are you the one paralyzed, uncertain of how healing will come? Or are you one of the friends who will do anything to help? Hear this word. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. They gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left, not even outside the door. And he preached the word to them. Some men came, bringing to him a paralyzed man carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it and lowered the mat the man was laying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately, Jesus knew in his spirit that this is what they were thinking in their hearts, and Jesus said to them, why are you thinking these things? Which is easier to say to this paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or get up, take your mat, and walk? But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. He got up, took his mat, and walked out in full view of all of them. This amazed everyone, and they praised God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. Will you pray with me? as you prepare to hear. God, you offer us these moments to reflect upon your word, who you are in our lives and who you call us to be. You know us completely. You know the reasons we sometimes find ourselves unable to move forward. You know the things which paralyze us with fear or guilt. You know the challenges of our minds and our bodies. God, we ask that your spirit will carry us to Jesus, that we will not be far away from your amazing touch. Forgive our sin and set us free from guilt and shame. Deliver us from fear that we can live in the confidence of your presence and power. Heal us, God, in mind, in body, and in spirit. God, you also know the people around us, whom we lift to you this day. Give us eyes to see as you see, ears to listen deeply, and hearts that are moved with compassion. Give us wisdom and courage, God, to offer an appropriate word or prayer or action, which can help another move towards you and your healing. We know that healing often begins with being lifted in prayer. And so, God, hear the names of those whom we love, which we offer to you this day. Receive these, God, and do what only you can do for them. Amen. And now I invite you to join the people of Wesley Freedom for this weekly word. Pray with me. Almighty God, we give you thanks that we are well enough this day to gather in your presence. 
And we welcome your Holy Spirit to move among us to do what only you can do. That we might say as we leave this place, gosh, we've never seen anything like this. For you are a wonder-working God who loves and heals and sustains us. God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, for you are rock and redeemer. Amen. The story tells us that people traveled at a great distance to gather in the place to see the one that everyone was talking about. They traveled far. They pressed in to get close enough to see, maybe even touch his shirt. Now, this was not a 2021 post-COVID concert. It wasn't the first time folks had gotten out in a while. It wasn't the first time they were returning to their favorite stadium to cheer on their team. No, these were people looking for healing for hope, for guidance, for forgiveness, for faith. And they traveled, they pressed in, they strained to see and to hear the one called Jesus. They came as we come today, hoping that by being present with the Lord, our lives may in some small or great way be changed. Some of us have the holy privilege this morning to gather in this sanctuary beneath the stained glass window where Jesus has his arms stretched out wide as if to say, welcome home, I've missed you. Arms stretched out eager to receive us as we are in our beauty and our greatness and our brokenness and our longing. Jesus, strong and capable to offer the divine touch that only he can give. As we gather, especially in this 8 o'clock hour, I invite us to remember those who worship with us from home. Those watching online share our same longing to be in the presence of Jesus. And so we trust that as the Holy Spirit can connect us in this place to an almighty God who reigns over heaven and earth, that same Spirit is very capable of extending God's presence to all the places that God brings this word to his people in this moment and for the days and weeks to come. Each of us are making space, either by coming to this physical place or by joining in virtually. We're making space for Jesus. We're making the trip because we believe that Jesus has the authority and the compassion to do great things in our lives. Why are you making the space? Why did you, if you're present physically, get up this morning and get dressed for church? What are you hoping to experience? Perhaps you come because you're grateful. Perhaps you come because you wish to thank God for God's unconditional love for God's grace that welcomes you in, for God's provision that is bringing you through day by day. Perhaps you are making this space for Jesus because you want to claim the opportunity to worship, to praise, to thank, to be grateful for who God is. Even as we're called to give God praise and thanks and glory, we're also invited, friends, to come honestly towards Jesus, seeking a touch that could make us whole. In the gospel today, a paralyzed man is brought to Jesus. And in a few moments, we'll consider how he got there because it's so important But first, let us ask, what did he need? Why was it so important that he got to Jesus? 
In first glance of the story, we would assume that he needed healing for legs that weren't strong enough to carry him to the place, for a back perhaps that had neurological damage and prevented him from running himself to Jesus. But note, when Jesus sees the man, Jesus doesn't notice the mat or the legs or the back that was weak. Jesus sees the man looking beyond the obvious and says, Son, notice how immediately he's family. He's not that guy that couldn't get there all those weeks. He's family to Jesus. Son, your sins are forgiven. Now, we didn't see that coming because we thought we knew the punchline. Paralyzed man brought to Jesus. He's going to get up and walk. That's a secondary concern for our Lord. He sees what we can't see, this trouble in the man's soul that would cause him to wonder if he was worthy to be in the presence of Jesus, that would cause him to wonder if he could move forward in his life, ability to walk or not. And so Jesus forgives his sins, offers him this grace and forgiveness that allows the possibility that he would be whole. And then Jesus also attends to the legs in the back and says, get on up and carry your mat out of here. You were able, either through the ability to get into your car this morning or ride your bike here, or the ability to use technology to tune in to this service, you had ability that allowed yourself to come into the presence of Jesus. Since you're here, what do you need to be made whole? As you offer yourself in body, mind, and spirit to the presence of a saving, healing God, what do you need to be healed? What is paralyzing you? Like the man who was brought before Jesus today, perhaps it is guilt that causes you to wonder if you can be in the presence of Jesus. At our later services this morning, we will baptize five. And as I told their parents this week, as we baptize these little ones, we pour into them a well of grace that is just waiting for the moment that they need it, and they say, Lord, forgive me. And it's already there the well of God's love and grace waiting to forgive. And so, if it is guilt or shame that causes you to limp into this place, then say, Jesus, forgive me, and you shall be set free. Perhaps it is fear that causes you at times to feel paralyzed. If I am to be honest with you, this for me was the hardest week of the pandemic. That seems kind of strange because we're all here. But the Delta variant kind of kicked my legs out just when I thought I was running again. Fear can stop us in our tracks, and we have to reevaluate how am I going to live? How am I going to thrive? How am I going to not let fear paralyze me? Even as I feel ca called to be a life giver, a promoter of health. We can bring our fear to Jesus and ask for courage and clarity. And those two things go hand in hand, because when our legs get taken out for whatever reason, and remember, I spent a year of my life in a wheelchair, so I'm not picking on anybody whose legs don't work so well. I'm, I'm there. We need clarity and courage to live these days so we don't just freeze up and feel so overwhelmed we can't move forward, so we can come to Jesus and say, Jesus, give me courage to step by step live my life to the fullness and give me clarity as to how you would call me to do that with wisdom and grace. Some of you would understand that mental health challenges can be paralyzing. 
Depression and anxiety are at all-time highs, understandably, in us, in our families, in our communities. And so we can bring that which isn't seen, but is as real as legs that can't bear weight. And we can ask for the healing of Jesus to restore us in mind and body and spirit. What do you bring to Jesus in prayer this day? Know that he is eager. See those hands? He is eager to receive you, the fullness of you, your greatness and your brokenness, and to heal you, encourage you, strengthen you, give you clarity and peace. This is what happens when we allow ourselves to be present with Jesus. Most often we would call this prayer. When we are together in a corporate body, we might call it worship. In a space where we can encounter the Lord, where we can have conversations with our God. Heal me, forgive me, save me, guide me, lead me. These are openings for the Holy Spirit to do God's work. Now, in Mark's gospel, everything happens immediately. If you read that gospel, you will notice that Jesus is always running, running, running to the next place. And the healing happens in an instant. The forgiveness is fully absorbed in a moment. My life just doesn't seem to move as fast as Mark's gospel. I don't know about any of you. But I believe in these holy encounters. Some of you are like, amen. It's okay to say amen if your healing doesn't happen as fast as it does in Mark. Jesus only had three years on this earth. It had to happen. But for us, it will happen over a lifetime. But these moments we spend in the presence of Jesus, they are the beginnings of healing processes that have the power to transform our lives and our faith. At the end of this message, we will open up a space like that for you to pray for your Lord. What will you ask for? The healing of mind, body, spirit, relationship, community, nation, world. What will you pray? But before we get to that prayer, I have one more thing for you to consider. It's what I asked the children in the children's message. How did the paralyzed man get to Jesus since he wasn't able to walk himself there? Four friends. Four friends each picked up a corner of the mat And they brought the man to the house where they had heard Jesus was. Now here is a a cautionary tale for the church. The church was so packed of people who were able to bring themselves that the paralyzed man, the hurting man, couldn't get in the door. God help us, right? And so these four friends, seeing this conundrum, they lifted that mat, the man on it, onto the roof. Sorry, Walt, they cut a hole in the roof. Walt kind of fixes everything we break around here, if you don't know that. That's why I'm picking on him this morning. Walt, we're going to have some holes in the roof. No, not literally, spiritually. They cut a hole in the roof to lower their friend down to Jesus. Brothers and sisters, this is who we're called to be, and never has there been a more important moment to do this, because people are hurting so many, unable for whatever physical, emotional, spiritual reason to bring themselves to Jesus. Maybe because somebody told them they couldn't, or they weren't worthy, or people like you don't go to church, or you don't look like the people at my church, or maybe because their feet can't get them there, or they don't have gas to drive there, or their mental health made it too hard to get the covers down today. So many folks who aren't going to get to Jesus on their own, and we know Jesus is already there, but they don't know that yet. And so we're called to be the friends, the church, who find some way to gently carry them a step 
closer and a step closer. And if we need to, to open up the roof, to change how we do business, whatever it requires, so that those who are hurting and vulnerable and feeling on the outside find themselves as the ones who we gently place right at the feet of the Savior. And as we get to do that holy, awesome work, then we'll be the people that get to say, what? I've never seen anything like that before. And that's when it's so exciting to be the church. And we're going to do that over and over again. You may have noticed at 8 o'clock, I'm looking at the camera just like I'm looking at your faces because there are a whole lot of people. Our survey said about 20 families that were back online because we're not outside. And so I have to make sure that they are as important to us as you. I wanted to tell you a story about some of our online folks. Uh, there is a couple who found us because of connection uh, to one of our leaders, and they started watching online. And during this year of watching online, they were diagnosed with cancer, the father. And so we've been mentoring and, and ministering to them on the phone and online. And another one of our worshipers happened to run into them. They live 60 miles from here. Another person who worships with us online happened to run into them walking in the neighborhood in a random conversation. They realized that they both watch Wesley Freedom 60 miles from their neighborhood. So this is church home right now. And the one shared that he was having cancer surgery this week, and the other one took him a care basket with a prayer. 60 miles from here. Jesus is finding a way to bring his hurting people to the feet of a savior. And we have to keep making space for God to never fit in the house. And definitely for our focus on what's happening in here to never be so important that we don't realize who's on a mat right outside the door. We had a busy week. On Friday, a family called our office. They had lost a loved one and asked if one of us could do the funeral. And Pastor Ian and I looked at our, each other. I think at this point we have five or six funerals in eight days. And every sensible thing wanted to say no. But the Holy Spirit just moved. And I got to go on Friday. Thank goodness Pastor Ian covered the funeral here yesterday so that I could go on Friday and do a funeral for a woman named Candy who I've never met. But her family said, you're the only church who we could find who would be available to pray with us today. That's who we have to be. But it's not just the church leaders, it's all of us together, because it takes four people to carry a mat well. And so we each just move it a little bit forward, doing what God has gifted us to do, like the three generations of women who sewed this quilt to hold me as an infant. We work together, each of us with our own giftedness, to be able to hold and lift our neighbors and our friends to Jesus. This month we are launching a new worship service at Hope Rising. There's a service there. Uh, Thursday night, I'll warn you, it's the same sermon as you're getting this morning. <laughs> but that is a space. It's kind of an opening in the roof to say we're focused on hurting people. If you're in recovery, you get a front row seat with Jesus in our community. If you are grief-stricken and Sunday morning church is a little too much right now, you get a pew on Thursday night because it's a space for you to cry. It's a space for you to heal, for you to receive counseling or small group support or whatever you need to become whole. I'd ask this morning if any of you feel called to help plant that site. We have a small group assembled, but we could use a few more for whom Thursday night is a good time to worship. But if you sign up, know that you're not just coming to be healed yourself. Every person in that space is going to be asked to hold a corner of somebody's mat and be available to pray, to hope, 
to listen, to abide, to journey with hurting people. We do this work together. It's a part of the DNA of Wesley Freedom. It has been and especially is in the weeks and days ahead. We are mat bearers for those who can't bring themselves yet, but will one day carry us to Jesus. And so, my friends, as we come to this time of prayer, I invite you to be honest with your Lord. What healing do you need to be made whole? What strength, what courage, what forgiveness do you need to journey through today and tomorrow? And as you pray, would you actively invite the Lord to reveal to you one or two for whom you are the mat bearer that will help them get a step closer to an encounter with the healer. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you take away the sins of the world, and by your breath, your life, your death, your resurrection, you are able to make us whole. We give you thanks that we are able to be in your presence this day. If we brought ourselves to church, we thank you for the physical ability that allowed that to happen, for the mental capability, the spiritual readiness that allowed us to even get to this space. And for those who join with us online, God, we give you thanks for the technology that allows us to be present even when we're physically far away. God, we give you thanks that you are eager to hear our prayer, that you take the initiative to be available to us. And so we offer ourselves with gratitude for all that you have done in our lives, for your grace that welcomes us, your unconditional love that holds us tight, for all that you have provided to bring us to this moment and all you will provide in days ahead. And Jesus, we also acknowledge our brokenness. And we ask that you, the Almighty One, the Wonder-Working One, would make us whole. Forgive us for all of our sin. Set us free from guilt and shame. Meet us in our fears and give us the courage and the clarity we need to take wise and steady steps forward. Lift us from despair and grief Offer to us the peace that passes all human understanding. That as we journey through the shadows, we may sense your light. Lead us out of temptation that we will avoid being bound again by sin, but walk steady-footed on the highway that leads to life. Heal us, Savior, from the illness of body, of mind, of spirit, Make us whole, 
that we can live in love of you and thrive in your service. God, press on our hearts and minds in these moments those whom you would call us to bring to the Savior, those in our families, our neighborhoods, our workplaces, who, like us, are in need of your grace, your forgiveness, your healing, your strength. God, hear now the names, the first names, of those we would offer to you as we whisper them in silence or as we speak them aloud. We carry these persons to you and ask that you would do all in your power to make them whole. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Amen. Amen. 